sharpness and noise reduction. You do your best to improve one in Photoshop only to hurt the other. You can aim for some mediocre compromise or you can use a few tricks to optimize both at the same time, which is exactly what you'll learn to do in this video. I've already processed my RAW for optimal results using standard techniques and open it up as a RAW smart object. I'm going to double click into it and you can see in the details tab that I've added sharpening and I've added noise reduction. And the reason for that, if we zoom in close to the detail, is that this sky is very, very noisy. And that's despite shooting at ISO 100. The problem is blue skies are always going to reveal some noise. It was a long exposure at two and a half seconds and it was a pretty warm night. So all those things conspired to bring out a lot of noise. In fact, if I disable the detail for a second, you can see in the original exposure, that's just how noisy it was. It looks pretty awful. That's something I usually think of as being much higher ISO, but certainly can be a problem in any image. And this is a great example of it. So I need a way of reducing that noise and I use the noise reduction slider to do so. The problem is I've made it better at 10, but in doing so, I've started to lose some detail. You can see again from before to after, I've already lost some detail, even though I've bumped up the sharpening. So what's happening is that as I kick up the noise reduction, I make the sky better and the building worse. And if the building gets worse, well, I could go add more detail and I could go add more sharpening amounts, but then I make the sky worse back and forth, back and forth. It's like ping pong. I can never get to a place where we have optimal noise reduction and optimal sharpening. As I make one better, the other gets worse and vice versa. So where I started really was the best compromise between the two, but certainly not optimal because I still had too much noise in the sky and too little detail in the structure. So instead of trying to do everything at once, let's start over using a different approach. So I'm gonna cancel and just keep things where they started for reference. And let's keep a copy of this for reference. So I'm gonna create a copy of it by right-clicking and choosing new smart object via copy. And by doing so, it will be independent, meaning that as I make changes to one, I don't affect the other. And we can see that the Lamentia Basics panel is lit green, telling us that this is an independent smart object to help confirm that. So we'll take our bottom layer, let's just mark it in red because it's only for the purposes of demonstration. Let's take our top layer and let's rename it as clean because what we're gonna do is go in and remove those raw adjustments for sharpening. Let's turn the sharpening to zero, the noise reduction to zero. And instead of trying to do it in the raw, we'll do it outside where we can take advantage of high quality masks instead. So we'll say, okay. And now we have our clean version. We need to apply noise reduction to the sky and sharpening to the areas of detail. So that'll be two different steps. Let's start with that noise reduction and I'm gonna apply it by going up to filter, camera raw filter. Now you can use whatever filter you want. You could use Neat Image, you could use Nix Tool. There's a lot of great tools and they would all follow a similar approach to what I'm gonna do here. But I'm gonna go use the Adobe tool with camera raw filter and then we'll just zoom in so we can see the detail. And now I'm gonna be optimizing for noise in the sky without having to worry about the building. So I don't have to just go up to 10 like I was before. I can really push this until the sky looks great. Let's go all the way up to like 60. I think that'll do it. Obviously the structure looks awful from before to after. I have obliterated detail, but it's not something we really need to worry about because we're going to mask this into the sky only. So we're gonna protect this from this adjustment in just a moment. Let's say, okay. And now we've got our camera off filter and the filter mask is basically saying to apply it everywhere because white reveals and the mask is white everywhere. So what I really want is white in the sky so that we only bring out the denoising in the sky. And this sky happens to be darker and blue, which means that it's perfect for a luminosity selection to help us create a perfect mask. So I'm gonna go up to Lemenzia and start with the fact that it's dark by clicking on D for darks. Let's try to get a little more separation because I want the sky and not the structure. So let's go bring it down to like three and a half. That's gotten a bit better, but I need more. So now I wanna bring color into the equation here. So what I want is to make sure the blues are very, very dark and included, and the reds and yellows are not, which is what this structure looks like. If you look at the underlying color here, it's fairly red and yellow. So I'm going to go to the color conversion layer because we can optimize these previews from Lumenzia. And let's go make sure that our blues and cyans, the sky colors are very dark and included in our darks preview. And our reds and yellows are very light, so they're therefore excluded from it. And now we've got much better separation. Not perfect because the structure is still painted in here and I don't want to have any noise reduction. So now I need something to secondarily restrict things further and we can add a selection that tells Lemenzia which parts of the image to use, which parts of this preview. So we'll grab a quick select and just click and drag across the sky. 
And so now what we're telling Lemenzi is only use the areas inside the marching ants and then use that luminosity. So we'll combine the best of both. Now, as I scan this, the marching ants kind of skipped a few areas, kind of the sky dropped all the way down here. So I'm going to hold down alter option and let's go knock out these little areas where the ants, I think, got a little bit overzealous and selected structure that I don't want to do any noise reduction to. I don't need a perfect set of marching ants, but I do want to roughly trace the building and that looks great. So that'll be perfect. And now what I want to do is convert this into my filter mask. So I can click on my target layer. And to make a mask, I just click mask to convert the preview into a mask. And because I didn't have a mask selected, Lumensi is asking if I want to create a layer mask or a filter mask. Now, normally I wouldn't have this red layer here. That just adds waste by having an extra copy of my image, makes the file bigger, more layers to look at. I wouldn't really want that. So I don't want a layer mask because then I'd just be put, punching a hole in my image and revealing a bunch of transparency down below. What I really want to do is limit the areas where the filter is being applied. So I want a filter mask. And I'm going to choose here to feather just a little bit to soften the edges of my marching ants. And that's been converted into a filter mask. And if we alter option, click on it, you can see we have a perfect mask of the sky with none of the structure included. Now, if we go and zoom into the detail, let's see exactly what we've done here. So when we had the noise reduction everywhere, if I shift click this mask, you can see it was hurting the structure, but then with the mask, sorry, let's go shift click again. With the mask in place, we've got a nice looking sky without harming the structure. And if we compare it to the original by turning the whole thing off, you can see how noisy the sky was. And now we've cleaned up all that noise. We've got a much better looking sky. We just need to go now and do something to address the sharpening on the building. So let's zoom back out and we need to apply sharpening, but I can't do multiple filter masks on the same layer. So I need a new layer to do this work. So I'm gonna create a copy of this but this time, instead of creating an independent smart copy, I want to create a dependent copy. So I'm just going to hit the regular command or control J. And you see that the basics panel is showing raw and yellow, meaning that this copy is linked to something else. It's linked to this. They're both showing as yellow, whereas this one is still green. So what that means is that if I make a change to this layer, this layer will update and vice versa, which is very handy because if I double click this and make some change to the slider values, I'll be updating both at once. Let's just go make some really obvious change just to help demonstrate the concept. So I'm gonna make it super yellow. Obviously I don't want this, but just to show the point, say okay, and we'll see that both thumbnails are updated to yellow, but this one, because it was independent, didn't update. So this one still has the original sharpening noise reduction. These are linked. And not only does that allow you to make one set of updates for all these copies, but it also keeps your file size a bit smaller because the underlying asset is not being duplicated. I'm gonna Command Z to undo that. Obviously I don't want it to be yellow, just want to demonstrate that point. Now we've got a little bit of housekeeping to do. Let's rename this bottom layer as clean plus noise reduction because the filter is doing noise reduction. And then on top, we don't want the noise reduction. So let's drag that to the trash. And let's rename this one as clean plus sharp because we'll be doing the sharpening on this. So to add the sharpening, I'm going to go once again up to the filter menu. And I'm going to go back to camera raw filter. But again, you could use whatever sharpening filter you want. It would be the same workflow. I'm just going to choose the Adobe tool for this. And we'll open this up. Let's go back to the detail tab. Let's zoom in and we'll apply our sharpening here. So let's go start where we were. We had uh, an amount of 50. Radius was minimal at half. And the details are on 25. Now, if you've seen my deconvolution video before, you know that you can slide to the right for deconvolution, which will bring in a lot more detail but it also tends to enhance noise. And if you have noise issues, I would tend to back this off. And I think in this case, 25 is about right. So I think this sharpening is, is really pretty good. It brings out a lot of detail in this building and I like what it's doing overall. I don't need to make it super sharp here. I'm gonna do that with a separate creative sharpening step. I think that looks pretty good. There is a bit of noise in the areas that are relatively smooth in the building. So I'm gonna bring up the, not the noise reduction, but the masking which just says, you know, hey, don't sharpen areas you don't have to. If I alter option click it, you can see where it's starting to knock out the smooth areas there to just cut that back a little bit and avoid bringing out noise in the structure itself. And I think this looks great. Again, it's just gonna be applied to the building and not to the sky. We'll use a mask to control that in just a moment. So we'll say, okay. And now we've got the same thing where we've got our sharpening applied with a white filter mask, meaning it's applied everywhere. Now, this time we don't want to use a filter mask to control things because if we control the filtering, if we reduce the sharpening in certain areas, 
with this filter, the rest of it's going to be showing the underlying clean image, not showing the underlying layer here because we need a layer mask to hide parts of this layer to be able to see this layer. So we really don't want a, a filter mask. Let's go drag that to the trash. Instead, we want a layer mask. And the layer mask we want is going to be targeting these foreground areas. And we can create that directly from our sky mask and just invert it. Now, you can't just click and drag to bring up a, a mask here. I can bring it to the filter, but I can't bring a filter to a layer mask. There's no direct way to do that. So I don't want that. I need a different approach. And an easy way to do this is just if you command click on a mask, you make it active as a selection. And then if you go to your target layer, just make sure that's active and click for a new layer mask, the selection gets converted to a layer mask. So I've pulled up from a filter mask up to this layer mask. And this now is in the sky, which obviously that's not what I want. I don't want to sharpen the sky. I want the foreground. So if I hit Command or Control I, I invert to the foreground. And now I'm revealing sharpening in these foreground areas. And let's go zoom into the detail here and just take a look at what we've got. This layer here is applying sharpening just where it's beneficial. If we go zoom down to areas of detail here and just zoom in even closer, make it really obvious on YouTube. You can see how nicely that brings out some extra detail. These areas here look great. And we don't have any noise reduction inhibiting the results there. At the same time, this layer mask is preventing us from causing any problems in the sky. They're not getting any noise there. We can go check up above and indeed the sky looks clean. If we had shift clicked to show this everywhere, that's the noise we'd be enhancing from this layer. So this layer mask is just revealing the sharpening where it's useful. And then underneath it, this filter mask is just applying the denoising where it's useful. And then that's ultimately showing through the clean image anywhere we don't have one of these masks applicable. Because again, this bottom layer, we wouldn't normally have. It's just for reference. But let's see how we've done here. If we hold down Alter Option and click on this, we can see before is the original version here where there's a ton of noise in the sky to after where we've removed that noise. And if we come down a little bit and look before, not only do you see the noise, there's actually a sharpening halo here. And in the after version, there's no sharpening halo. And there's a lot more detail in the structure. They can see just how much better that structure is looking. If we get down into areas of even more detail, even more so. And I think we can take this even further. Let's go take our sharp layer. And I'm going to go up to filter, uh, sharpen, smart sharpen, and add some creative sharpening. And I think an amount of 150 is good. Uh, same radius at half is good. Reduce noise here. If we turn off the reduce noise, you see there's some noise coming through from the areas that are smooth in the architecture. So I do want to reduce some noise here so that my sharpening doesn't cause problems. And maybe I'll bring it to something like, you know, 6% or so. I think is a nice balance. And you can see how from before to after how the smart sharpening is bringing out some nice detail there without bringing out a bunch of noise in the structure. And so now let's look from before to after and see just how nicely it brings out detail. And look at these window details here and, you know, the sky areas where you have all the noise. And, you know, afterwards, we just clean that up really, really nicely by using this two phase approach to give us the optimal blend of perfect noise reduction and perfect sharpening. And of course, we don't need this bottom layer. So let's just trash that. And this would be the normal result where we've got the bottom layer with the filter mask and noise reduction, and then the top layer with a layer mask and our sharpening. And now click these next videos to learn more about optimal noise reduction and sharpening.